Microsoft Flight Simulator is out on Xbox Series X and S and our coverage is on the channel and as you know by now we are mightily impressed by this game on console. We were impressed last year on PC as well but it was always the question how it could be done. How could they bring this ultra high-end PC experience to console? It was not necessarily a given. And to talk about this today I'm joined by someone directly from Asobo Studio that would be Lionel Fuentes technical director on Microsoft Flight Simulator. Thank you for joining me today. Hi, Alex. Uh, thank you for having me. And uh, it's an honor to be a part of your video. Uh, very happy to be here. Thank you. Thank you so much. Uh, so let's get right into it right now. My first question kind of is um, looking back at the way Flight Sim initially launched. We noticed back at launch that it had some very hefty GPU requirements, of course. But the, the biggest thing that we noticed at the time was the heavy CPU requirements of Flight Sim uh, 2020, specifically around cities and on the ultra settings. We noticed how CPU clock speed or single threaded performance was most important and how the game did not necessarily scale very well over six uh, hardware threads or six logical threads. We could see right before this new patch launched on PC uh, that a Core i9-10900K could be in the 40s maybe around a really big city at the highest settings while CPU limited. But now it's so, so much faster. We, we've recorded up to 50% faster CPU limited scenarios like seven milliseconds decrease in CPU time. So how exactly was this achieved? Could you walk us through some of the engine changes that allowed such a, a dramatic difference? First thing is that um, Flight Sim has a history and that history is short in code. Uh, as in uh, the, uh, you can find code that is, dates back from something like 1995 at least. Um, so we, uh, I just want to give a little bit of context on how we, we end, uh, ended up here is that we had uh, the original code from uh, Flight Simulator 10. We had Asobo Studios engine, and then we had uh, Bing Maps. And we kind of put all of that together. And, uh, but the uh, old code isn't, uh, I mean, was made for, for other machines, let's say. And uh, so, uh, so it, didn't, uh, it, didn't, it wasn't meant for being uh, scaled and multi-threaded uh, the same way. So the components we developed, though, uh, like the, uh, the train engine, uh, in particular, it is meant to be multi-threaded. What's being threaded? So you, you have like the uh, HTTP requests that are made to uh, to uh, Azure or to Bing uh, download the data. Then there is a lot of processing of those data on the client machine, where you, you can like, for example, do the flattening of uh, what we call thin data, which is uh, which comes from photogrammetry, or we we can compute normals, etc. For for things that we we don't have pre-baked because there are so many data that we. We cannot pre-bake everything, etc. So there are a lot of uh, processes like this that are multi-threaded, but the uh, core of the simulation still is not. There is the streaming of the airports, which is uh, multi-threaded, and uh, that one came from FSX. What, what I, where I'm going with this is that there are lots of uh, different parts of code that we did not necessarily do ourselves and where we had to take some ownership. And uh, a big part of it also was uh, the fact that for uh, the uh, glass cockpits, and for the UI, we are using uh, uh, basically a full-blown web browser mm -hmm. with uh, all of the uh, HTML, JavaScript, CSS, and all of that. Uh, so it's good because it, it gives uh, a lot of, um, a lot of uh, flexibility. And flexibility is very important for us because, as you know, there are lots of uh, add-on developers that can create uh, glass cockpits or that, that can... Uh, uh, modify the, the simulation. So this was important to us, but it has a drawback. <laughs> it's hard to optimize a web browser. And uh, <laughs> one of the things we had to do. And uh, w when you have uh, code in, uh, in JavaScript, um, there is a, a lot of uh, garbage collection happening yeah. uh, where the, uh, the code is making allocations and uh, the programmer just expects so this memory to be freed automatically. And uh, when garbage collection happens, the world stops, and this creates stutters. So we worked a lot on, uh, on avoiding those stutters by doing less allocations and finding unexpected uh, places where those allocations were happening. So there, there is this, and uh, there is also um, being more uh, smarter in terms of how you, you uh, balance this over threads. Like if you do a lot, sometimes you do lots of garbage collection, sometimes you do more uh, JavaScript execution, so, and you split per view, uh, so, uh, so there, there was this. Then in general also the fact of um, uh, optimizing the, the terrain as in uh, 
uh, re reducing the amount of memory being used and uh, reducing the processes that could be reduced or optimized uh, helped a lot. So um, it, it was really very different things, a bit everywhere that, uh, that helped uh, optimize things. And uh, one particularity of FlightSim is that uh, because the amount of data that is uh, being used there is uh, so big, uh, because the world itself is so big and so that <laughs> you need so much data to uh, represent it, uh, we cannot uh, go over all of these data and tweak it the way we like. So uh, there is a lot of, um, of work that is to uh, be dynamic and adapt to the data and, uh, and adapt also to the condition. Like uh, when you are flying very high above the sky, you don't see much of the terrain versus when you're very close to the terrain, then you have lots of details. And this is a very, very different workload and we need to, uh, to adapt to, uh, to uh, many different things. So. A lot of work was into making things dynamic. Was there any um, kind of optimizations to the simulation model, like regarding like the, the fluid simulation for, uh, you know, like wind going over the wings or any of the like the physicalization? Was that optimized at all for this update? So there are lots of caches that mm -hmm. are, that are a, a bit of the uh, magic formula to avoid redoing things. So. Uh, so mostly this, but uh, now the simulation model uh, is still uh, single-threaded. Okay. It's not necessarily that big a part of the, of the frame in the end. So another part of the update was increasing the frame rate, at least from what I've seen on PC, uh, uh, inside some of the larger, um, I would say, like jumbo jets, like the 787 seems to be running better right now. So what was part of the optimization effort for larger airliners? The glass cockpits are made using this web browser. <laughs> so, uh, what I said before uh, applies directly to, uh, to this use case. So, I've been talking right now about uh, DirectX 11 version on PC. Of course, consoles uh, and Xbox Series are surely using DirectX 12. Uh, what specific optimizations were done there uh, regarding the engine on console to get it running faster? The objective before optimizing uh, the uh, rendering, etc., was to make it work at all. Uh. <laughs> That's the first step. <laughs> so, so that was the uh, the uh, the objective, right? Uh, port to the X12 and uh, do uh, everything as necessary to have something that works. And uh, the thing is that in our current state, we are rarely limited by the uh, render thread itself. So, because mm -hmm. we have this render thread, which uh, also splits for some of the draw calls into several uh, different threads, like when we write to the G-buffer. We, we haven't yet uh, tackled uh, all the potential of DX12, to be honest, because it was not really what was the limiting factor uh, for us in terms of performance. So as another part of this on PC, we noted uh, that the game had a massive reduction in how much uh, memory it is using, both video memory and system memory, and I presume this helped uh, the console experience as well. We noted in the exact same scene, exact same flight path, 1.5 gigabyte reduction in VRAM utilization and a nearly nine gigabyte uh, reduction in system memory in the exact same scene. These are huge numbers. Uh, how was this achieved? Uh, <laughs> there was a question, will we achieve this? <laughs> it's, it, I mean, it's scary, uh, but uh, you, don't, you don't know until you try, right? Uh, so, um, so there, there were uh, lots of uh, important optimizations that we made there. Uh, so, th to be to be clear, this was really uh, the uh, biggest part of the work on porting to to console, mm -hmm. uh, optimizing for memory and fitting in, uh, into the uh, the Xbox Series S in particular. Um, so, in, on the world side, when you have the the world in the game, you have it in several places. You have the world outside. You also have it in the glass cockpits that show the world. So you were talking about the 747. Uh, so in, in big airliners, you can have a, a visual representation of the world. And uh, you can also have it in the uh, VFR map. So um, yes. there are uh, several places here. And we wanted to reuse the same uh, system for drawing the, the, the same terrain system. So we wanted to reuse the same terrain system. And it was uh, duplicating those data for each and every use uh, of the, the system we had. So we made this in common. We also optimized the train system uh, by, um, by looking at where we were storing textures that uh, were not really needed because actually there was no data to display there. Uh, also changing texture formats, like uh, sometimes there are things you can, where the channels are not used. Sometimes we also compress the textures and uh, at the, the least, last resort was to reduce the quality 
but that was really the, uh, the last result and re reduced resolution where it makes sense. So a lot of tuning here and, uh, and optimization so on the wall side. Uh, one other big optimization we did was uh, when it comes to streaming the, uh, the objects uh, of the airports uh, and uh, to, uh, to stream uh, different LODs independently, uh, which we were not doing uh, the same way before. And uh, then on, the, uh, on this uh, web browser part, we also um, did uh, some compositing where we, we could um, get rid of uh, intermediate textures that were used for, um, for composing the, the image. And uh, we could also avoid some allocations that were not really necessary. So uh, there was a lot of work on, on this side as well. And lastly, there, were also, um, there was also work on the uh, art and the data side and the audio uh, where it could be compressed, could be streamed. So stream more and more stuff and uh, make it fit into the box. <laughs> so, so as part of this, um, are the console uh, versions using at all some of this uh, velocity architecture or direct storage uh, capacity on the Xbox there? To use the uh, decompression feature, uh, hardware decompression feature, that is uh, that's part of it. And uh, it's, it's part of the... Uh, it, it's used for all of our file accesses. So when we stream the, uh, the data from the airports, uh, it's used there among other things. Incredible, cool. Um, so GPUI, as we mentioned uh, initially when we've touched this video or touched this game multiple times in the past, how it is a beast on ultra settings. Obviously, you can turn down settings to make it lower. Um, what was the optimization effort like to bring those that the quality of ultra, the biggest parts of those ultra settings onto the Series X GPU, for example? So. Uh, in terms of GPU optimizations, we had some um, some specific uh, some specific work that we did for uh, the trees, where the trees were so the trees are using this uh, fancy technique called imposters that I love, yes. uh, where you uh, you basically have a, a single sprite, but uh, because you pre-baked all the different uh, viewpoints for the, the tree, you uh, you uh, uh, do a smart choice between the viewpoints that match. Uh, you, uh, what you see and you interpolate them in such a way that you feel like it's an actual 3D object. It's super cool and it allows us to, to draw millions of trees. But uh, we were using geometry shadows for expanding the, the quad and just getting rid of this was, uh, was helping. <laughs> a lot. And, uh, and, and uh, we, we had something similar for the terrain itself because there is this, uh, this system where you have tiles that get cut in parts and where you choose uh, which part to draw or not and you cut it and uh, we were using geometry shadows there and we went to some other technique that didn't need it. And uh, we also worked with, uh, with uh, Microsoft uh, uh, GPU experts that could, uh, that could make uh, reports on uh, occupancy, uh, use of compute, uh, where you can uh, you, you can maximize your utilization of the GPU, and um, that's pretty much it. So are you emulating uh, geometry, geometry shader functions through something uh, like the mesh shader pipeline, or did you come up with some other alternative uh, to do that? Uh, that's an interesting question. Uh, we have not yet uh, experimented with mesh shaders. We may in the future if there is uh, some good reason to do so. It's just vertex shader based, and. Uh, and, uh, and uh, doing the distinction between the, the vertices that you want to, to extrude or, or uh, and for, for the terrain, it's uh, with the, we're really getting technical here. But that's fine, that's <laughs> fine. It's digital foundry, it's fine. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so yeah, it's like uh, using the, uh, the index buffers to be able to only select parts of the tile that we want to uh, not to draw. So, uh, so yeah, other ways. Fitting this onto the Series S GPU, that must have also, beyond just the memory requirement, there also had to have been some sort of cutbacks or optimizations very specific there. In our review, we mentioned that uh, the most obvious one, beyond the resolution difference, uh, where we counted an internal 1080p resolution there, uh, was the reduction in object draw distance for things like uh, terrain or uh, buildings. Uh, what exactly is the reason for doing that very specifically, like on the GPU? Uh, so uh, on the Series S, our priority mm -hmm. was really memory. So uh, as, as I said, we implemented this system for streaming uh, LODs that, that is more precise than, one we had, than what we had before. So um, it's, uh, we, we tuned the, distances, the draw distances of objects and the, uh, the way LODs are being used 
in order to uh, minimize the number of uh, meshes and textures uh, in memory at the same time. The game targets 30 FPS in its default mode on Xbox Series X and S. What was the main decision behind targeting that frame rate on the consoles? So we want to have the best uh, visual quality possible. And the, the type of game or simulation makes it so that it's not like uh, an FPS or an RTS or something where you have to be very quick at uh, clicking and reacting, at etc. We would prefer to focus on making something look great than mm. making something uh, run fast for this particular use case, as long as the experience is smooth, which is important. There is, though, a kind of optional uh, variable refresh rate mode that goes above this FPS cap. Firstly, does this uh, uh, variable refresh rate mode change any of the graphical settings no. in the game? No, no, no. OK. Least, uh, Did not least. seem too good to know that, at least. Um, and we noted in our review, it's a little bit hard to get uh, frame rate capture for variable refresh rate stuff from our end. Uh, but we did note that uh, the game is running uh, surprisingly close to or above 60 FPS at times uh, on uh, both Series S and X, especially the Series S, which was very interesting. Um, what are the primary bottlenecks at that point in the subsystems of these machines? Like, is it on the CPU side? Is it on the GPU side? Uh, or is it on the memory side when you unlock the frame rate? What is usually the first thing to cause the frame rate to kind of clock out at its max? Well, in general, it's uh, still the uh, CPU on the, the main thread. But yeah, it can vary. It, it's, uh, as, as usual, it's always a, a mix of uh, several things between the, uh, the, rendering of the rendering of the terrain, the culling of objects, uh, you have the, uh, uh, the simulation itself, and then you have this uh, web browser uh, system that, uh, that is also part of the equation. So um, yeah, all of this combined. As part of this, was there ever the idea that maybe we should try for a 60 FPS mode, given how high above 30 the game actually can scale at times? Uh, the thing is, if you target 60 FPS, you have to do 60 FPS all the time. So, and uh, as I said at the beginning, that we have very uh, variable loads, as in uh, when you fly very high or when you fly very low, you can, it, it's, uh, it, it becomes very different. So, um, so it seems safer uh, to, to target 30 FPS and maximize uh, how good uh, a rendering we can get. If you look at 60, you don't do stutters. You <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It's more important to have a smooth experience than having a high number. Agreed, agreed. That's our motto kind of here at Digital Foundry. Really good frame times, very consistent frame rates. Um, one thing uh, that the game uh, does currently, I don't know if it's intentional or not, is that on console, on Xbox Series X and Series S, uh, the game only unlocks the VRR mode when you have your set uh, set to 120 hertz. <laughs> but not six. But not sixty hertz. Is this intentional? <laughs> okay, uh, you, you you go far in your analysis. <laughs> 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 this is true. Uh, so um, so the thing is, uh, there is currently there was no way for us to detect whether the TV supported a variable refresh rate or not. So it's basically a heuristic to uh, on whether it supported refresh uh, variable refresh rate. We also tried running on a, on a 120 hertz um, setting, and it appeared smoother locking at 120 hertz than locking at 30 hertz. Because when Very the GPU, well, yeah, when the GPU finishes rendering, uh, the time before it gets on to the screen is small because it's one uh, out of uh, um, one over 120. Uh, mm -hmm. 8.33 milliseconds. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, so yeah, we we use uh, yeah we enable. Uh, VRR basically on 120 hertz. So the game uh, we noticed uh, on console is targeting 1080p on Series S and uh, targeting 4K on Xbox Series X. But we noted as well, like the PC version, it has a really great uh, temporal anti-aliasing up sampler, a reconstruction uh, anti-aliasing. Um, how is this put to use on Xbox Series X and S? Temporal aliasing is also used for uh, doing a temporal upsampling. Uh, we accumulate 128 samples over time per, per pixel, and uh, we uh, we do a, a cumulative um, moving average first, so that when you have a, an object uh, appearing, uh, you don't you you don't give that much impos importance to history. And uh, after a number a given number of frames, we can have an exponential decrease where the history becomes uh, less important. This is all to, to avoid uh, the, uh, the ghosting artifacts and, uh, 
we are yeah, trying to make use of what makes sense. And uh, when the history becomes uh, less relevant, we reduce its weight so that when it's uh, too far from the uh, border mm -hmm. around the color of the, the pixel that, uh, that we are computing. So. Uh, last question is something I always like asking developers in general. As a part of this update, bringing the game out to have better performance on PC, which is wonderful, by the way, and also seeing it uh, translated so beautifully over to the consoles, what is something that you are particularly proud of uh, in bringing this update out? Uh, I would say I'm particularly proud of the fact that it works and runs <laughs> first. <laughs> you know, because it was, uh, it, it was really a challenge to, uh, to have this title work uh, on the console, considering how uh, huge it is and uh, the amount of data that are being processed and, uh, and the fact that it gives a great experience and that people seem to like it. And th this is very important to us, obviously. We are making uh, experiences for people to enjoy. Uh, I don't have any particular uh, technical uh, point that I would say is uh, more important than others. It's, it's really a mix of uh, very different parts that needed to be optimized and, uh, and to, to run smoother and uh, to, to yield a better experience in general. And uh, mm -hmm. I'm also very proud of the team. <laughs> <laughs> I'll, make, I'll make sure I get that in there. Okay. Well, uh, um, thank you so much. We <laughs> really love uh, this game. We loved it last year. We love it more even this year. We think Asobo Studios do incredible things. This game, of course, and Plague Tale, which we also really, really love as well, too. Um, and uh, thank you so much for talking to me today, Lionel. Thank you very much. It was a pleasure. As that's about it, essentially, for this video. Uh, if you did like it and you would like to see more technical interviews like this, please hit the like button and subscribe to the channel. If you're already a subscriber, hit that little bell in the corner to be informed as soon as Digital Foundry posts a video. If you want to support us and help us out, support DF on Patreon to uh, enable content like this in the future, as well as get all of our content available in high quality for download. And as always, you can follow me on Twitter, and I will say Auf Wiedersehen und Au revoir.